dress it up however you like. Uh, you can only ever observe your own mind. Uh, it is truly subjective. Uh, what the behaviorists did in the previous century was to exclude subjective phenomena from psychology, from the science of the mind. Um, and they focused only on what is externally objectively observable, namely, of course, behavior. Uh, a different approach was taken by this chap, Sigmund Freud. Uh, his approach was that science must, uh, the methods uh, of science must be adjusted to its objects, not the other way around. You can't say we don't want to study subjective phenomena. Uh, if subjective phenomena exist, if mental experience is part of nature, then we have to find some way of including them within science. We can't say we're not going to study those things. And so um, what he did uh, was to develop a method um, of interrogating mental experience, uh, which necessarily meant that it was a highly questionable method because he was, he was, in, he was investigating subjective things using therefore inherently necessarily uh, subjective methods. Um, and he started his first really systematic study was a study of dreams. And dreams are perhaps, you know, quintessentially subjective because uh, you can't say, I'm busy having this dream, you know, can you see, uh, can you see what I see? I mean, I I'm experiencing such and such, are you too? And so on. Uh, dreams happen while you're asleep um, and uh, you can't report on them. Uh, you can only report on them when you wake up. So they're retrospective, single witness descriptions of something that happened while you were asleep. So it really has, um, you know, all, all three strokes against it. What Freud did using the kind of method that I was mentioning earlier was to get his uh, research participants, who were mainly his patients, to uh, take each element of the dream as they remembered it and say everything that came into their heads in connection with that image. This was the famous or infamous free association method. And Freud said, if you do that, what you find uh, is that the associations aren't random. Uh, they all sort of, they all sort of point to a underlying meaning. That although the dream on the surface seems you know, chaotic and nonsensical, the associations lead you to a latent meaning, uh, what we would nowadays call an implicit content. Freud called it latent content. So the explicit dream. Uh, what Freud called the manifest dream uh, is chaotic and random and apparently meaningless. But Freud said, if you follow this method of his, you find a latent, uh, implicit content. Um, and this content is of a stereotyped kind. Uh, it is in the nature of a wish, uh, a heartfelt wish, um, a wish so heartfelt, um, revealing desires and inclinations of a kind that you normally wouldn't want to admit to during waking life. Uh, and on the basis of this uh, questionable method uh, and surprising claim, uh, Freud built the whole of psychoanalysis.